Hi folks, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, PhD for the Institute for Dialectical Materialism. If I feel sad, what do I do? If I feel situationally depressed, what do I do? If I feel hopeless, what do I do? I experience those emotions on a daily basis. I am not chronically depressed. Generally, I'm, I'm a very happy person. And um, when I'm outside, chatting with my neighbors, chatting with my friends, I seem perfectly fine. And yet, in thinking about Gaza, in thinking about the conflation of Gaza with Hamas by Benjamin Netanyahu. In thinking about the way that U.S. President Joseph Biden has been financially and militarily supporting Israel, A Zionist entity. I don't know how I should respond. If I could walk into Israel right now and stop those IDF soldiers from walking into Gaza. Those drones, those planes from Israel from going into Gaza. Right now, I would, despite my osteoporosis, I would. I assume I would be killed instantly by idea forces. Do I care? No. I don't care at all. Death has, has never really been something I have been concerned about. It's life that has concerned me, the tragedy of life. Whether as a child, growing up autistic, being beaten up by other children every single school day. As a teenager, being beaten up regularly by my father, with my mother, for reasons unknown to me, not talking to me for months, but at times promising me that the next time your father beats you, we will leave. There were so many next times, too many to count. We never left. Why? My mother was afraid of how she would support herself, but 
when your child is being beaten, that is not the first question you ask. First question is, how do I get my child to safety? You worry about the financials later. And so now, And I am not comparing the suffering I went through as a child to the suffering being experienced right now by people in Gaza. There is no comparison. But at least I have a heart for the people in Gaza. Even though my body is not there, my heart and my mind are both there. I wish I were there. If any of you are listening, which I doubt, but I assume it's possible, I want you to know that, that I genuinely care about you. about your being, about your struggle, about how Western imperialism, how the American puppet Israel is destroying an entire population with no international repercussions. Why? Because the U.S. has veto power in the U.N. But even if it didn't, say we had a different U.N. to an extent where there was no veto power. No one, no country in the U.N. Security Council had veto power. Would that really make a difference? I would like to say yes, but I don't see how. Because the United Nations and its bodies have no authority to punish Israel for its war crimes or to punish the U.S. for its war crimes. Giving money and militia to a country carrying out war crimes is a war crime in itself. And yet there are no consequences at all for anyone the people in Gaza are dying. They are eating, they are eating from garbage. They are drinking seawater and water that has been used with tampons. They're drinking that. That's their diet. It's not my diet. I eat quite well, thank you. I have no right to eat quite well. And I'm being totally serious. Using Roy Baskar's concept of the cosmic envelope and his concept of co-presence, which is the way in which the cosmic envelope manifests itself in the universe, including between human beings, we literally are all a part 
of one another. What hurts a gazin hurts me. Even if like Benjamin Netanyahu, the members of his government and the IDF forces are ignorant of it. And they are ignorant of it. They are behaving in ways that as a child, I would have found incomprehensible. As a child, going to Hebrew school and learning about Zionism without any context, I had no awareness of how Israel was founded on the destruction of Palestine by the tanks of a future Israel. That was not taught to us by Joel Bernstein at his Hebrew school. We never learned that. That was not a part of the curriculum. It should have been. The fact that it was not is excruciatingly painful to me in retrospect. I wish I would have known then what I know now. The gloves have come off. And now is just pure fighting in the streets, mass killing, Israelis starving their Palestinian brothers and sisters. And for what? Access to a sea? More territory? The Israelis don't care about the Gazans, by and large. They don't care about anyone except themselves, apparently. And yet the Gazans are the ones who are suffering, while the imperialist Israelis live in comfort. They are worried about that Hamas attack that killed many Israelis. And certainly that's unfortunate. No one should have to die, especially in a painful way. However, when you consider the context, there would be no Hamas if Israel did not treat Gaza and the West Bank as its colonies. In fact, Gaza and the West Bank are the colonies of Israel. And Lebanon might just as well be a colony too. Why are no Arab countries, no Persian Gulf countries, or as some people say, no Arab Gulf countries? Either way, why are none of them coming to the aid of the Gazans? Why? I will tell you why if you don't know. Money. Money. Pure greed. 
Israel is a wealthy country in many ways, on multiple levels, as are many of the Gulf states, wealthy countries on multiple levels. The Gazans are not wealthy. The people on the West Bank are not wealthy. So why would the leaders of the Gulf states care about the Gazans right now? So they're turning their head, looking the other way, making believe that the great Holocaust of the 21st century is not happening. That the fascist state of Israel is not engaging in genocide when it clearly is. And those Gulf states just sit idly by and watch it happen and do nothing. They are deaf to the cries of the Gazans. They don't hear their screams, their shouts. <sighs> They don't feel the hearts of the babies and in incubators that have been bombed by the IDF because they have no feeling. So who was better? Who was worse? Israel, the Zionist entity, or the Gulf states? That's, that's a serious question. I don't know what the answer is. It's hard to measure evil because evil is a quality, not a quantity. You can't quantify evil, put it on a scale and measure it and evaluate it. You can only feel pain if you have the ability to feel pain. If you have the sense of shame, which everyone should have, but sadly, a lot of people do not have at all. And so, another day has ended, at least here in the U.S. And more Gazans have died, funded by that monster Joe Biden, carried out by that monster Benjamin Netanyahu, who is afraid that if he ends the war, someone will simply replace him, which is likely true. And Benjamin Netanyahu will begin his trials for war crimes, which is also likely true. So he is willing to sacrifice the lives of the Gazans at the altar of his own life, at the altar of his own life, without any degree of shame. There's no shame. There is no shame. I mean, I don't agree with the ideology of Hamas. They are an Islamist organization. 
they want to establish an Islamic state like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. But why do they exist? Why is there a Hamas? Because of the Zionist state and its war crimes. Without the war crimes of the Zionist state, there would be no Hamas. There would be no Hamas because there would be no need for it. Rather, Palestinians and Jews and Druzes and Christians and others in the area would be living together as fellow human beings. But that is the problem. Not everyone in South Asia, not everyone in the Middle East is a human being. Bibi Netanyahu is not a human being. The IDF soldiers are not human beings. The victims of Netanyahu, the victims of Biden, the victims of the IDF, many of them are good human beings, meaning they have humanity. That's what it means to be a human being. A homo sapien without humanity is not a human being. And so we have an absence of humans in the most powerful, the wealthiest state in South Asia, the Zionist entity. And it is carrying out a war funded primarily by the U.S. So ultimately, in my view, Israel and the U.S. both bear responsibility. I was going to say equal responsibility, but again, that would be to quantify it. And you can't quantify these things. They both bear responsibility. They are both evil countries. My own country, the U.S., the most evil country on the face of the earth, the most corrupt country, in the world is helping to facilitate the genocide, the Holocaust of the 21st century and the cries of the Gazans are simply being ignored. No one is paying attention to them well, no one that can do anything about it. Why are the mothers of those IDF soldiers and the fathers of those IDF soldiers sending their children into battle? They too bear responsibility. Since we are all a part of the cosmic envelope. We are all literally a part of the same substance, the substance that makes us homo sapiens. But even more broadly, the substance of the universe. Why don't the people in Israel, 
the majority of whom support this horrendous state terrorist campaign see that. I know that can't be its effect in their religion because I was raised in a minimal branch of that religion, non a non-practicing Jew. And most American Jews and most American Muslims get along very well. So there's nothing inherent in Jews or Muslims which makes them natural adversaries. They are not natural adversaries. They are adversaries because of jerks. I was going to use another word, but I stopped myself. Like Benjamin Netanyahu. The third world. the part of the world that is suffering the most, that is experiencing the greatest amount of terror, and that terror coming from the first world, the third world, the oppressed, the colonized, the hegemonized, the imperialistic places of the world, the victims of imperialism. Those places, hopefully, at some point, in the very near future will rise up on the ashes, on the ashes of the first world and begin the revolution or revolutions or socialism and communism. That is our only hope. There is no other hope. The present world order has failed, completely failed, and yet nobody has pronounced it dead in the media. The mass media, the mainstream media, continues to primarily support the Zionist entity and to ignore the cries of the Gazans. It is inconceivable to me as a person with a heart, as a person who was given a heart by the maiden, whom I've discussed before, about 20 years ago, when she appeared at the foot of my bed as a being of light, with her hands outstretched like this, totally full of light, She took my keys from the push pin in my wall. So I filed a police report, but two days later, she returned the keys to the push pin. That experience gave me empathy or as Edmund Husser would call it, intersubjectivity. I had no empathy before. I could not have made this podcast before because I had no heart. I had a sense of injustice. I would have seen this as being unjust, but that is not enough. One needs to have a heart filled with love, compassion, loving kindness, and joy for the people of Gaza and the rest of the third world because they need to succeed. People in my own 
decrepit country, which should not even remain a day longer, in my view. For the time being, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, PhD. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.